All right, good morning, everybody. Thank you for joining us. This is the latest in our series of opportunities to meet the authors. Uh, we have a new publication out, uh, and this is an opportunity for the authors to introduce themselves and their publication. The publication, of course, is uh, the first we've done on CTBT issues, at least uh, in my five years at CGSR. And it's a look at technical issues in the CTBT ratification debate, a 20 year retrospective. The co-authors are Anna Pacelli, a postdoctoral fellow at CGSR, and Bruce Goodwin, a senior fellow at CGSR. Uh, thank you, Anna. Thank you, Bruce, for not just joining us today, but all of your exceptional effort in putting together what is, by all accounts, a, a fine publication. Uh, but I think the, the, the viewers this morning would be interested to know a little bit about your, your backgrounds and what, what brought you to, to this writing project. Anna, why don't we go ahead and start with you? Thank you, Brad. I have been working on, on nuclear issues since 2010. That's when I started my PhD project back in Hungary. And I come with a background in international relations. So I was uh, obviously looking at most of these issues uh, with a policy mindset. And the CTBT issue was actually my first published paper back in Hungary. Uh, obviously, back then it had a very different uh, focus than uh, this current report. In 2010, I think the uh, the reason that I, I got interested in the issue of the CTBT in the first place was that we heard a lot about the Obama administration's commitment to ratify uh, the CTBT, their intention to submit uh, the treaty to, to the U.S. Congress, uh, again, for advice and consent for ratification. So I, I did a great deal of work on uh, on trying to understand the history of uh, test ban treaties, how these different uh, treaties evolved over time. And, and I really uh, went back to see the congressional record around the 1999 ratification debate and try to make some projections on what to expect if the CTBT is submitted to the US Congress again. So I had some background in, in the history of comprehensive, uh, in the history of the comprehensive nuclear test ban treaty and also uh, looking at some of the uh, the policy atmosphere around uh, this question, but uh, but this report was was definitely uh, a new uh, challenge for me to understand some of the technical issues that uh, uh, that were behind uh, these debates uh, surrounding the CTBT issue. And Bruce, you're muted, Bruce. Here we go. That should work better. Um, so I'm I am in a, a senior fellow currently at CGSR, as you stated. But before that, I started out uh, 30 years ago as a nuclear weapons designer at Los Alamos, and then came to Livermore in 1985. Um, and wh while at Livermore in the late 80s, early 90s, I worked on the technologies of nuclear weapons, uh, understanding them in detail. And as we were moving toward lower and lower testing limits, I developed techniques for certifying nuclear weapons at very, very low yields. Um, in fact, executed a pair of nuclear tests to demonstrate the capability. And so I was involved in a number of the briefings uh, to the experts in Washington on getting ready for further reduced nuclear testing levels. When in fact, uh, the CTBT uh, came along with a zero yield level. I then applied all of that work to developing techniques for certifying the stockpile without nuclear yield, without nuclear testing, uh, and in fact developed the methodology of uncertainty quantification for nuclear weapons in the early 2000s. So I've been interested in, in the technologies uh, surrounding the moratorium since the CTBT wasn't ratified and became particularly interested when recent, in recent years, a number of people at uh, the other nuclear laboratory proposed a return to nuclear testing, which I have to say, I think would be a tremendous mistake at this point. So that is why I got involved with this paper. All right, thank you. And it's been a great partnership between the two of you bringing two very different skill sets to bear on this set of questions. Uh, could you review for our viewers the, the main insights or key arguments from, from the book? 
Anna? Yes, so we started to very narrowly define our objectives in this paper and really stick to the technical issues and, and focusing on the technical debate. Uh, the scoping of the paper started with uh, giving a brief background of the 1999 Senate debate and uh, trying to identify, identify those key issues which were the most highly contested questions and eventually really influenced the outcome of the 1999 vote. We identified the five key areas that we thought were the, the key technical issues in question. The first one was would stockpile stewardship alone uh, provide the needed confidence in the reliability and safety of the existing uh, arsenal? Uh, number two was would it provide the needed confidence in any modernized or new weapon that might be developed without nuclear testing? Number three, how to maintain the needed testing expertise uh, in the absence of testing. Number four, can the combined monitoring capabilities of the United States and the international monitoring system of the CTBTO uh, give us enough information to verify compliance with the CTBT by all states, uh, including detecting very low yield and decoupled tests. And number five, was uh, whether the United States put itself uh, at a disadvantage by its uh, strong commitment to a true zero, uh, zero yield standard and how uh, the biggest adversaries of the US understood uh, these standards, uh, namely China and Russia. So we tried to systematically go through all five of these areas and, uh, and show how these issues uh, appeared first in the 1999 debate then we try to provide a technical and objective analysis of interim experience. Where are we today? What has happened in the past 20 years? How technological capabilities have evolved in the interim? And, uh, and what kind of conclusions and uh, observations can be taken based on those, uh, on those uh, technical developments? So uh, that was really the scoping of the paper. And these were the five main areas that we tried to analyze. Bruce, would you like to add something about lessons and takeaways? Well, I, I think that in fact, <clears throat> back in the uh, middle 90s, uh, the notion of taking care of the stockpile without nuclear testing was a very large challenge. Uh, that's why stockpile stewardship was developed. And I think that we've demonstrated in the last 20 years that in fact, stockpile stewardship has been a remarkable success. Um, so in fact, that particular challenge has been met. In fact. I don't think there's any question that we could, in fact, design and deploy a new untested, unnuclear tested nuclear weapon with very high confidence today based on the extensive technologies and capabilities that have been built up in the stockpile stewardship program. That program was non-trivial. Uh, it was a very, it is and was a very expensive program in terms of developing capabilities and facilities, but it has, in fact, been quite successful. Thank you. So the occasional paper has been out uh, roughly a month or so at this point. What, what sort of feedback have you guys gotten on it? So far, surprisingly, I think we received mostly positive feedback. Uh, as everybody who has, uh, who has read uh, papers about the CTBT and, and the nuclear testing moratorium can see that uh, this is a very polarizing issue and there are multiple different camps on both uh, uh, questions. Uh, to me, it was, it was really interesting to see uh, how uh, in the policy community, but also in the technical community, uh, there are uh, divisions uh, along some of these nuances. Uh, we have seen that the CTBT keeps coming back into the forefront of the debate, whether it's uh, a congressional effort to unsign the treaty, uh, in the past few years, or whether it's some media reports that uh, there might be some uh, some discussion happening uh, in Washington DC whether nuclear testing would be needed today. Uh, so CTBT never really ceased to uh, go out of fashion. We see that the think tank community, the activists are really engaged. Uh, there is also a very strong international effort trying to push the CTBT uh, ratification in the, in the eight holdout states, which are key for, uh, for the treaty to enter into effect. 
so this is really a, a polarized issue that, that remained in the forefront of both the international, but I also think in the domestic uh, debate uh, within the United States. Uh, so we expected the worst. We were ready for, uh, for a lot of critical uh, feedback on this report, but I think uh, partly due to the fact that we really kept a narrow focus on technical issues and, and we tried to provide an objective technical analysis of interim development and the fact that we did not intend to provide a roadmap for CPBT ratification. We, we did not take a political stance on any of these issues. Uh, probably helped to avoid some of uh, some of the landmines, and I think we really owe gratitude to you, Brad, for helping us uh, stay focused on our original set of goals and objectives, and uh, and and really keep this uh, report a technical analysis, which uh, which probably the reason that we mostly only received uh, positive feedback. Thank you. Bruce. <laughs> I think that we were, I, think I would agree, we've gotten almost entirely positive feedback on the paper. Uh, one area where there has been some minor, um, I wouldn't say criticism, but uh, disagreement has been in the area of how we got to zero uh, it, politically. And uh, fortunately, the principles are still available uh, and were more than willing to speak with us. And quite honestly, I was very surprised at how uh, zero came to be. Uh, you can read about it in the paper. Um, but in fact, originally, uh, the, the goal was to have a one kiloton treaty. And that uh, actually sort of suddenly went away. And that is, in fact, what the principles were marked on, a number of them, and how they were surprised by that event. So I encourage you to read the paper. Um, and uh, I think that you'll be interested and surprised also. Thanks to both of you for your good effort and leadership on, on this issue. Let me ask if there's anything you'd like to add in closing. Bruce first and then Anna, and if not, that's fine. Uh, I'm, I'm particularly enjoyed writing this paper and doing the research for it. I, as I said, I was quite surprised in a number of areas uh, as to how things developed. And uh, if I could leave this with uh, the message that I hope we don't return to nuclear testing, I don't have a position on ratification uh, of, the, of the CTBT, but a major motivation for me to write this paper was to in fact say that the uh, five areas were, uh, where there was technical concern, um, I believe have been satisfied effectively. Thank you, Anna. I agree that this has really been, uh, to me, a challenging, but also a very exciting research project. Uh, one week I was learning about hydronuclear tests, the next week I needed to pick up everything that was possible on decoupling and and coming with a background in social sciences was uh, uh, really made some of these technical issues uh, challenging for me to understand. But working with Bruce has been really an amazing experience. And he was always patient and ready to respond to any of my questions and explain any of these concepts to me. So we always say that it's useful for people to work in a multidisciplinary environment and work across uh, different uh, areas of expertise. And, and this was for me the, the first experience truly doing an interdisciplinary research project. And I have to say that I, I hope this is just the first in a long sequence of uh, uh, collaborative projects because I learned so much from this uh, uh, collaboration and, and I really enjoyed uh, working together with somebody who had a very different approach to question, a different skill set, and, and I think it's really worked well together. So I'm very grateful for Bruce to, to invite me to join him in this project. And, uh, and I also appreciate the guidance that we received from you, Brad, on, on how to keep a narrow focus on, on, on a set of objectives and, and how to move and maneuver across uh, this, uh, this very politically polarized uh, uh, land, land minefield. Well, thank you for those kind words. Thanks to both of you for your excellent efforts on this. And uh, thank you for wading into what's going to remain a very politicized and heated discussion. Uh, but we've added something useful to, the, to that discussion and kudos to you for doing so. 
At this point, we'll stand adjourned. These sessions aren't supposed to go on very long. They're meant to introduce you to the author, not review everything in the publication. So please do find the publication at our website. It's available for downloading. Again, thanks everybody. At this point, we stand adjourned. Thank you. <laughs>